Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the brand new M. Night Shyamalan movie that is hitting theaters this weekend. That's right, M. Night Shyamalan has a new movie. It's called Old and if you've seen a lot of M. Night Shyamalan's movies, you know that he has a vast range of movies ranging from like The Happening, which is so bad that it's good, to The Last Airbender, which is just straight up bad, to The Sixth Sense and Signs, which are two amazing thrillers. And then the his more recent work with Split, that was a phenomenal thriller that he was kind of like sprung back into form. And so M. Night Shyamalan has always been a director that I've been drawn to because no matter what his movie is, you know it's going to be a bold take. It's going to be original to a certain extent unless, you know, he's adapting things like The Last Airbender, but it's going to be something different. It's going to be something bold. And that's exactly what old is. It's a very bold take on a really interesting concept that has some aspects of like great tension from signs versus some very odd moments like happening-esque moments, which I'll talk about in this video because I do want to talk about spoilers for this movie. So if you have not seen old, don't watch this video. Or if you don't care about spoilers, then go ahead and watch this video. I don't really care. But this is definitely an experience that I enjoyed watching because it's an M. Night movie and you're never going to be bored watching an M. Night movie because it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. So let's just jump right into this thing and I do want to mention that this video is going to be spoilers so I'm going to be talking about things. It's not going to be a play by play but I'm going to do my best to try to cover everything that happened in this movie. So it starts out the family arrives at this hotel. They're greeted by the guests or by the, the hotel manager person. He gives them some drinks and they're ushered into the hotel and right from the beginning you can tell that M. Night Shyamalan has an interesting goal with the cinematography in this movie because again you get some great cinematography in this movie it's a very gorgeously shot movie at times and at times it looks like the happening which is a very it's it's something else but this family you get to find out pretty soon that you know they're they're not doing too well they went on this vacation because this is their last little get together before things fall apart with the family because the parents are eventually going to get a divorce and the wife has cancer she has a tumor and so things are falling apart in this family this is one last little you know one last experience together as a family before everything falls apart and they have two kids one is like 11 or 12 and the other one is six years old and you get to see them essentially trying to make things work and throughout the hotel you have a bunch of other characters you have miles from loss and his wife who has epilepsy you have this doctor who is you'll find out that he's pretty racist later on and his wife that it's like a supermodel that is essentially conditioning her daughter to like think of body image as the most important thing like oh always have good posture or you're going to turn the guys off or all these terrible things that she's teaching her child and all these different characters that are essentially brought in by the hotel manager saying that, oh, there's this exclusive beach and I only give this to guests that I like a lot. And so you're going to go, you're going to be driven by M. Night Shyamalan to this beach and you're going to have a wonderful time. But if you've seen the trailer, you know, it's going to be an existential crisis of a time because this beach ages people rapidly. And this is where M. Night really has fun with this concept. And I think when he's having fun with the concept, this movie really really runs because as soon as they get on the beach and they start discovering these weird things and the kids start aging up you get weird things where m night refuses to show the kids you get to see a lot of backs of people's heads you get to see a lot of the people who are being talked to and not the person who is talking to a lot of weird choices in terms of the cinematography in terms of the editing of this beginning part when you're first trying to establish what is going on the weird things that are happening but once it gets into the swing of things and this movie gets insane with its concept which a lot of it was unfortunately shown in the trailer it is a lot of fun to watch for one i think m night Shyamalan does a great job at unveiling to the characters that they are aging rapidly especially when it comes to the children because kids you know when when they're growing up they grow really fast that their aging is much more apparent when they're younger than when you're older and so the the adults don't really notice that they're aging rapidly but the kids do they are rapidly aging from like you know a six-year-old to all of a sudden he's alex wolf from hereditary and so you get to have this like slow-ish build up to seeing the the aging of them but once they discover that this is what's happening they're aging rapidly then M. Night has fun there's this amazing sequence where you know the the mom's tumor is growing rapidly like it, it was at first not visible from like the outside skin but all of a sudden it's like the golf ball size and it's like a softball size and it keeps on growing rapidly and they try to cut her open her wound heals immediately because her, she's aging rapidly her time is passing by rapidly and so this was one of the most, this is probably my favorite sequence in the entire movie because, you know, they have to cut her open and have to hold her wound open in order to pull out the tumor, which by the time they pull it out, it's massive. It's like a basketball size. Like, oh my gosh, that's 
completely terrifying. This sequence was nail-biting. The tension in that sequence and in the pregnancy sequence was very very good. And again, M. Night is having fun because you're having the parents kind of discuss with all the other people on this beach, like, oh, what's going on? What's happening? All these different exposition scenes that they're having while the, the kids are like laying down in a tent and you have Alex Wolf and you have Eliza Scanlon laying in this tent and you think, oh gosh, they're going to get it on. And of course they get it on. And all of a sudden she's pregnant. And this scene as well is very, very nail biting because you have that happening. You have all these other things, the chaos that's happening, the the grandma of the, the girl that's pregnant, she's having issues too. All these things are happening and the tension in all all these sequences are very entertaining. I think this movie kind of hits its max of the concept within the second act when things first start going insane because right when things kick off, like I said, it flies by. This movie, because things are aging so rapidly, the movie has to move at a pace that is absurdly fast. And so these sequences of existential terror, you're flying through these things from, you know, her giving birth to the tumor being cut out to, you know, the, the racist guy going insane and starting to stab somebody. You have all these different things happening all very quickly because everything in this movie is just expedited to like an absurdly fast pace and I think the second act of this movie was the best although you get very weird sequences where one had me wanting to die laughing whenever they try to leave the beach whenever they try to like walk off into the cave or the the rock path that led them to the beach you know they have these like blackouts essentially and when M. Night Shyamalan was visualizing these blackouts he was using a lot of dolly zooms a lot of just weird effects and and you have a character just go like and it's so it's so funny he just like holds his head like that and he's like looking at the camera and it's it was so laughable there's some things in this movie that's laughable there's a shot in this in this entire second act where you see like the corners of everybody everybody's faces and one shot it's focusing on one character but in the very corner of the screen you get to see like somebody's face cut off and it reminded me a lot of this shot from the happening and it's just like what what are you doing at the camera, M. Night? There's a lot of weird visual choices that he does, along with some like great visual choices with like the camera waving back and forth from characters to character, like in, during the birth sequence or when they first arrive at the hotel and you're seeing the wife, you know, looking off into the distance and you see the dad with the kids having fun on the bed and it's kind of panning or uh, dollying back and forth between the two. You have great things like that, but then you have characters' faces cut off at the weirdest times. You're staring at a lot of people's backs of heads. It's very, very odd. And I will say the characters for the most part, I do like the family and that family dynamic. Like I said, they set up that family drama pretty well in this movie and they explore it mostly at the beginning and they take a break when the chaos is happening and all these characters are getting, you know, taken out like flies and then you have more focus towards the end of the movie with the family once they're the last four remaining. But most of the other characters are kind of dumb. They, they have this idea where, oh, if you go off too far or if you try to leave this beach, you have a blackout. So let's, I have an idea. I'm miles from lost. I'm going to try to go ahead and swim around the ridge. I'm not going to blackout and drown like the one woman that we found earlier who, you know, the rapper guy was saying that, oh, she went swimming off and all of a sudden she came floating back and she had drowned. What do you think happened? She probably blacked out because she tried to leave the beach and that's why she drowned. So let's just try that again. That's a great idea. Or let's go ahead and try to climb the cliffside. That's a smart idea. It's not like we're going to black out and fall to our death. Like, it, there's things like that where I'm just like, these characters understand what's happening to them. They understand if they try to leave, they black out and they just wake up back, back, you know, running back towards the beach because that's the only place where the pain doesn't happen. And so these characters have that knowledge, yet they still do stupid things to try to get off this island in panic. And like, sure, they're panicking, but like, still. Another great sequence I really liked is when the two kids, Thomas and Mackenzie, and Alex's wolf's character go like running into the cave while, you know, the parents are dealing with the racist, uh, schizophrenic guy. And, and they go into the cave and his wife is there, the one who's like the supermodel who has like a lot of body image issues. And, you know, she's in this cave and she keeps on like breaking her bones and her heel, her bones are like healing in weird shapes and like the cracking of that. And she just wants them to put out the light because they don't want anybody to see her. And it's just like, that was a very disturbing scene. I very much like that. Like I said, M. Night Shyamalan, when he's playing with the concept of aging very quickly and now healing very fast because you're aging quickly, that was a very 
very cool sequence. So you're bouncing back and forth between like these good ideas and these very weird choices. And also like the idea that you're getting older so your vision is eventually going to go out. So the husband's character, his vision goes out, the wife's character, her hearing goes out, and you get to see some visualization of the wife like covering one ear and spinning in a circle and you kind of hear through the surround sound of everything that's happening when I was watching in the theater and like that was very cool. Some very very cool ideas playing with this concept that was just really entertaining to see. And of course it's M. Night Shyamalan movies so there's some mysterious aspect you're wondering why this beach is doing this thing how are they going to get off of it and they keep on looking up to the mountains across the ocean they see these lights these like flickering things and you're thinking maybe it's a camera maybe they're being watched. At one point I was even thinking like this feels like Love Island like when the when the two kids are off in the tent fooling around like that whole thing feels like this just feels like we're watching Love Island like this is some reality TV show that some sick group of people are just like watching and finding it entertaining and me as an audience member I felt like the person that's being entertained by this weird messed up situation because it felt like a reality show at times a melodrama within this situation and so you're always wondering throughout M. Night Shyamalan is there going to be some sort of twist is there going to be some sort of twist ending and I will say I did really like the ending of this movie because you find out that the hotel manager has a system where they invite people that have chronic illnesses they invite people that have some sort of either mental illness or physical illness they bring them to the speech so they age rapidly so they can test out different medicines and this is where this movie really does feel like a product of the time we're living in we're living in a post pandemic world a post covid world or a, a mid covid world because it's definitely still going on and this thing has happened and M. Night Shyamalan has lived in this world and this was his response to covid and to having like this viral thing where they're trying to heal illnesses very quickly and they're sacrificing people in order to get those things and part of me was like you know that's the, you know what I'm kind of on their side with that but the other part of me is like why are you inviting people with illnesses that have children because that's a really messed up part these two little kids have not, like it's just the wife that had you know the tumor inside of her so just bring her or maybe just her and the husband or something it just felt wrong for the kids to be dragged along in this messed up situation and so in that way I actually really did like the explanation of what was happening here and how they were trying to do the medicine and how it really felt like it was a product of uh, the of it's, this movie's a product of 2020 essentially, and I think M Night Shyamalan and his way of expressing his his existential crises throughout COVID is this movie, and I feel like that's a cool insight into the mind of M Night Shyamalan. The fact that he was the one who shuttled them in, and he's the one at the top of the mountain who's like, yeah, they definitely drowned. They definitely did not swim through the coral reef. They definitely died. That was pretty funny. For a moment, I thought he was going to make it like he was behind the entire thing and he was like bringing them to the wrong beach or something like that. I thought M. Night Shyamalan was going to be behind all of it and I thought that would have been very funny. But he had the, I guess, the brains to not do that because that's kind of dumb. But <laughs> I don't know. M. Night Shyamalan has some really great ideas in this movie. He has a lot of great concepts. He has a lot of great scenes and nail-biting tension, especially within the second act of the movie. And I will say that the journey with the two kids, going from the two kids' age to slightly older, to Thomas and Mackenzie and Alex Wolf, eventually to the adult versions of them, and their journey throughout this movie, even though they didn't really go through character arcs, and although Alex Wolf's character went through so much trauma of, you know, having a child, that child dying, you know, having his the person that he loved in this short amount of time falling to death from the cliff all these things like this guy must be traumatized after this movie but I did enjoy watching them because it was a good aspect of you know they're going from a young age to now they're adults older than their parents age by the end of this movie and I thought that was pretty cool and the fact that they were able to get out and essentially dismantle this entire messed up system that was cool like dismantle the system that is all messed up that's sacrificing innocent children for the for the I guess betterment of people still but like at the same time they they cured epilepsy but then they murdered like eight people but epilepsy murder I don't know <laughs> I honestly don't know, uh, even if I did do a rating system, I don't know how I'd rate this movie. Also, I will say the exposition and the dialogue in this movie. I've heard a lot of people complaining about the dialogue in this movie, and I will honestly kind of pile on top of that. There was one scene where Miles from Lost, his character, is expositing something. He was trying to figure out some reason that something is happening, and it reminded me a lot of this scene from The Happening. If we stay here, we are going to die here. Whatever this is, it looks like it's not occurring about 90 miles from here. Let's go. So there it is, guys. This movie is 
bonkers. It's very bold. The camera choices are bold. The direction is bold. The story is bold. And it is just a very entertaining movie to watch. You'll either think it's so bad it's good and you want to laugh throughout the whole thing like it's the happening, or you might find the concept very intriguing. I'm finding myself kind of halfway in between because I can see how people can laugh at this movie because in some ways it's so bad that it's good, but in other ways it has some really great concepts and really great nail-biting tension, and so I'm kind of in the middle on this one. So what did you guys think of M. Night Shyamalan's latest movie? What do you think of him as a filmmaker? I'm curious to hear all of you guys' thoughts on all of that. I had fun talking about this movie in spoiler fashion because it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Of course, it's going to be fun to talk about the spoilers and what happens at the ending of this movie. Did you guys guess it? Did you guys figure it out? I don't know if I got it. I thought it was some reality show thing. But, <laughs> I don't know. It's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Anything could happen. So thanks everybody for watching this video, and I hope you guys subscribe to the channel because I'm going to have a lot more reviews. I cannot wait for What If to come out. I just did my Loki series, and I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of movies soon. I do want to finish my Fear Street series, so if I have time this week or maybe the week after, I will have reviews up for Fear Street Part 2 and Part 3. I did not forget about it. If anything, I will definitely do it before Halloween and maybe have that part of my 13 Days of Halloween series because I feel like that's a great trilogy for Halloween. So thanks guys for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel to see all of those things and I hope to see you guys in my next one.